All right, as usual, just like last year, I can't believe people actually come to watch me talk. Uh, last year, it was, what, 10 in the morning on Sunday? And I figured, like, fuck, I'm hungover. Who's going to be here to watch me? And then Sunday at 4, I'm like, fuck, dude, I, I wanted to fly home today. Who, you know, but hey, for everybody who did come out, thanks. I really appreciate it. And uh, just like last year and every year, you know, I've been coming to DEF CON. I fucking love this, man. So I appreciate everybody who came out. All right, so this year's talk is you spent all that money and you still got owned. So I've been doing a lot of pen testing and I'm going all over to all these different countries and pen testing and I'm running up against all these different defensive things. You know, application firewalls, uh, WAFs and IPSs and NAC solutions and we're still giving them the beat down like pretty freaking bad. And then in a lot of cases I roll out and I get into the middle of the pen test and that shit turns into incident response. It's like, dude, you're already fucking owned. <laughs> Fuck. You know, so that was kind of the topic of this. So let's do it. So who am I? Network, application pen tester dude, trainer, AKA the black guy at security conferences. <laughs> Everybody who always wants to know, I'm like, dude, that's me. Yes, that's me. All right, and then how do I do my thing, man? I hack, I curse, I drink. The order changes, but it's all the same. If, you know, so if you don't like people who say the word fuck, you might want to get up and leave. <laughs> okay? All right, so I always do this because, you know, it's that nostalgia, especially since I'm here at DEF CON, man. Let me take you back, all right? So this is 10 years I've been doing this DEF CON thing, man. And for me, back in the old days, man, pen testing was easy. So we would just tell the customer, hey, dude, we're security people. And the customer would be like, oh, okay. Oh, damn. The security people are here. And then like we would break out our open source tools like Nessus. Who remembers when Nessus was free? Yeah. Shit. So we would break out our shit, man, and it would be like, yo, they're coming in here with Nmap and Nessus and all this open source stuff. And then we would go out, hit our websites like rootshell.be, Packetstorm, anybody? Who's with me? That's what I'm talking about, right? The good old fucking days when you would just yank down your shit, fucking compile it and be like, yo, fuck, I need these libraries from over here. And, you know, then dot slash the fucking planet and just like drop shells every fucking where. So then we would like take screenshots and be like, yo, man, we gave your network the fucking beat down. Here's the report. <laughs> right? And then after that, it was like this. Remember that shit? Remember that shit? Your network fucking sucks. Pay me. <laughs> well, today, man, everybody's a CISSP. And then, like, does he, do you guys go through this? Like, the dude who hires you thinks he knows more than you. And, like, sometimes he actually does. But, like, fuck, why'd you hire me then? So he's like, well, you know, we're doing this, we're doing this. We've got the IDS, we've got the IPS, we've got the MAC, we've got the WAF, we've got the this, we've got the that. So I'm rolling out there, and I'm like, this is some bullshit. So let me, let me walk you through a, a little story. Now, anybody who does my talks knows that I always got a story. So, story. I'm pit testing this client about a year and a half ago. I get out there and the customer's like, okay, Joe, well, you've already been auditing these subnets. Can I get you to go over to this subnet and do a VLAN ACL audit? Okay, now, have any of you ever done a VLAN ACL audit? Okay, well, you guys are smarter than me because I had never done one. So I'm back there, I'm like, what exactly do you want me to audit? He was like, well, audit the VLANs. So, all right, I go over and I look at the config and I'm sitting with the network admin and they've got, for 300 users, 90 VLANs. <laughs> now, I'm having a moment. I'm like, how the fuck you got 90? I mean, you ain't even got... So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll tell you what. Let's get a little piece of paper and I just walk from person to person. I was like, hey, man, do you need this VLAN? How about, yo, do, do you need this VLAN? Uh, how about this one? So I went through this VLAN ACL audit, and then I go through all these VLANs that aren't being used. I'm like, okay, you're not using this one, you're not using this one, you're not using this one, you're not using this one. And this is like a big, big fucking company. So we go through and we audit all these VLANs, we do some network resegregation shit, move some shit around, and now I audit one of their DMZs. Company's got four DMZs. So I audit one of the DMZs, I'm like, yo, man, these boxes, you got a couple of boxes out here that like really need some patch updates. So I go over and I tell the deputy CIO, I'm like, yo, well, you got these boxes that 
need to be patched. You know, you're missing some MySQL patches, you're missing some PHP patches, got a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. So they have a meeting, because everything's a fucking meeting. They have a meeting, and then one of the developers stands up and goes, oh, no, 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 we can't patch those. Those are our development servers. And I'm like, is this shit passing the common sense test? You got your fucking dev servers in the DMZ? Like, <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> so I'm out there and I'm, I'm working with the client a little bit more and I start to do my little pen test thing and I drop a couple shells. I'm like, oh man, this network is fucked up because it's too easy to drop shells. Client says, well, how come our IDS didn't catch you? And I was like, there's an IDS? <laughs> So he goes, yeah, we're being monitored by, I can't say the name because some of y'all probably work for him. <laughs> so the, the company had hired a, another company to outsource their IDS, right? To do the management reports and all that kind of bullshit. So we go over and we go look at the box. I'm like, well, yo, man, do I have creds on the box? Mind if I just take a quick look? So to give me creds on the box, I try to log into this fucking thing and this thing takes like fucking two minutes to log in over SSH. I'm like, what the fuck? So I log in, and I'm like, this bitch is slow as hell. So I run check rootkit. This motherfucker's got four rootkits on it. <laughs> Pen testing at its finest. Okay, so what do I do when I'm up against these big companies? People are like, dude, you audit all these fucking banks, you audit all these big fucking companies. And really, I, I just ask Google to help me. That's it. So first thing I do is I do a bunch of quick Google dorks. I look for SQL errors. I look for uh, remote file includes. Anything that's gonna give me a quick shell, okay? I always go for the quick shell. Go for the fucking jugular when you're on a pen test, dude. Don't do all that bitch scanning shit. Go for the fucking jugular. <laughs> Okay, so I always look for SQL injection, always look for RFIs, always look for cross-site scripting. You know, try to find that stuff right away. Then after that, start trying to do your passive recon stuff. So I try to figure out like, okay, well what subnets do they have? Where's all their stuff located? I use this fucking unbelievable tool called Firefox. <laughs> fucking unbelievable, man. You would be amazed at what it can do. So passive recon is one of the tools that I use, something you really gotta try out. I'm sure most of you guys are already using it. Definitely gotta try that out. Maltigo, definitely the shit. Definitely gotta use that. And then the next thing I do is go look for load balancers. I run into load balancers on probably 30% of my pen tests now. It's getting real common, okay? So biggest deal for me, figure out if the box is load balanced, figure out if it's DNS or HTTP load balancing, because like I said, if you're shooting packets at it and then you know the fucking load balancer is sending your packets every which way, well, it kind of makes the testing a little hard. So definitely got to figure that out first. Um, and then once again, we have that amazing tool called Firefox that helps us find that out. So throw on live HTTP headers and make some generic requests to the web server. See if anything within the HTTP header changes. So if your first packet you send, when you get the response, it comes back and says IIS5, you send another packet to the same box, it comes back and it says IIS6, dude, it's probably load balanced. <laughs> same thing with the dig command and netcraft. Netcraft is freaking awesome. You'll often see stuff, it'll tell you right there in it, you know, F5, big IP and all of that. And you can also get the IP addresses of the load balancer itself. So that's been a real big deal for me when I'm pen testing. Load balancer detection is a shell script that does it. Halberd is a Python script that does the same thing. Okay, so these are some real good things to help you figure out what is the real IP of the host that you're trying to attack if it's behind a load balancer. All right, next thing I run into is IPSs. So it seems like everybody has an IPS. However, the overwhelming majority of my customers have it in IDS mode. Does anybody else have this issue where you're like begging? Turn the fucking thing on, dude. Let's block some traffic. <laughs> really? But we'll see what happens. Okay, who's of the belief that if we block some legitimate traffic, we'll make note of it and then we'll allow that? So fuck it, let's block all the rest of the shit. Who's with me? Okay, I'm just making sure that I'm not the only one who thinks this shit, right? So, okay. 
So when I'm trying to figure out if I'm up against an IPS, I do some real simple things, okay? I'm a Linux guy. I'm using Windows right now and I feel a little dirty, so please bear with me, okay? So the first thing I break out is I break out curl. And you see that I go for WinNT system32 cmd.exe. Now guys, this attack has not worked since Jesus was walking the earth. <laughs> Let me inform you if you do not know. Okay? The only reason that you're doing this is you're just trying to see if something blocks your IP address or sends you reset packets to your connection. So if this thing sends you a reset packet when you ask for cmd.exe, well, it's probably an IPS. If it blocks your IP address, it's probably an IPS. It's like unbelievable deductive reasoning here, right? So some guys from purehacking.com came up with a tool that does this, active filter detection, the Aussies in the house. So they got this figured out, really good tool. I'm working on some stuff in Python to kind of change it up and enhance it a little bit. So, you know, for those of you guys who support Python, fuck Ruby. If any of you guys support Python, <laughs> come holler at me. We're working on some shit. Yo, fuck Ruby. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. By the way, did I mention I curse? Okay. So oftentimes I do run into IPSs. Um, what I generally do is I just shoot with, you know, for three or four IPs. So I shoot from a couple of different IPs to try and see if I get reset packets or if I get my IP blocked. So once I know I'm up against an IPS, the next thing I try to do is see if the IPS can handle SSL. So again, that's why we use Linux. Uh, just go ahead and create uh, an XNID, XINET D file. I call it SSL test. So you see that I open it up on port 8888 and then any data that I pipe into localhost 8888 goes into this little shell script. You see it's server sslproxy.sh. Now here you can see my mad, mad shell scripting capability. Look at that one liner shell script, baby. <laughs> what? So the traffic goes straight into OpenSSL and then makes the connection to the target and then sends all that same active filter detection or you know cmd.exe again trying to see if my IP gets blocked, okay? The overwhelming majority of clients that I have that do deploy an IPS and do deploy it in blocking mode do not decrypt the SSL traffic prior to it passing the IDS or IPS. So that's one of the things that I really look for. Um, if you guys are running into that, try to get your client to spend the money. Hey man, get an SSL accelerator. Terminate the SSL in front of the IPS and then let's actually start trying to decrypt it. Okay, attack through Tor. Um, I do this a lot. So I fire up Tor, push all my stuff through Tor and Privoxy, and then that same thing where I just push all my attacks to localhost and it pipes out through Tor, same thing. So for this one, the recommendation is get your clients to block Tor exit nodes. Okay? Most companies don't have a valid reason for needing people to connect to them through privacy. Sorry, I know we give a shit about privacy, but fucking companies don't. So tell everybody, block Tor exit nodes. Uh, that's the big thing that I'm doing with a lot of my customers. I don't have uh, glip proxies in here because um, the hangover was really affecting my ability to do slides this morning. Okay? And then the last thing that I've been running into is WAFs, web application firewalls. So because I do a lot of PCI pen testing and some genius over at the PCI council figured that, hey, if you have a web application vulnerability and you don't want to fix it and you deploy a WAF, you are somehow now PCI compliant. <laughs> For some reason I'm pen testing a lot of WAFs now. So things with the WAFs, uh, they're actually not that difficult to identify, uh, pretty much just throw any freaking character at it and this thing fucking gives up the bit. She's like, yo, okay, I'm a WAF. <laughs> really fucking difficult to figure out if you're attacking a host that's behind a WAF. So you send it any special character and then the thing fucking like gives you all kinds of weird things. So um, if you request cmd.exe and you get a method 501 instead of a 404 file not found, you're probably up against Apache mod security. Now newer versions of this have, newer versions of mod have changed this. But who the fuck really upgrades their WAF, really? So I run into this a lot still. Um, also another one that I run into, uh, Actronics Web Night. Uh, you see that in the HTTP response header, it gives a, a uh, response code of 9999 and no hacking. <laughs> So I run into this. Uh, 
if you're seeing that you're not up against one, you know, just start adding things to it to see what it does and see if it gives you a 404 for a file that it should not have. You know, I request joe.exe and then I request netcat.exe.